This is impossible! The SCP site director wasn't normally a calm or cheerful man, but the researcher had rarely seen him as angry as he was right now. His face turned a deep beet red as he scanned the documents on his desk before he asked how months of valuable research on this subject had suddenly gone blank. The data was completely gone. The researcher gulped nervously, hoping a demotion wasn't in his future, and nodded. How could this be possible? This was an experienced researcher who should have been taking all of the necessary precautions. Could the being they were studying somehow have erased all these documents himself? That's just what the researcher had been trying to find out for months, with hours and hours spent trying to learn the extent of its abilities. Well, where are they? The site director asked. I want everything you have! The researcher dropped a printout of their research on the mysterious subject's abilities on the director's desk. Every relevant line read, Data Lost. The director let out a deep sigh. He wanted to hear everything the researcher knew. Well, everything he could remember, at least, from the beginning. The researcher sat down and began to relay everything he could about SCP-343, which some of the other researchers had started to refer to by the nickname, God. SCP-343 was first sighted in Prague, just an unassuming older man wandering the streets. He seemed completely normal to everyone who passed him by, until he decided he was tired of staying on the ground. An SCP agent stationed in the area noticed the old man disappear from the streets, as if he was blinking out of existence, only to appear on a rooftop nearby. The local SCP teams were marshaled, and they had soon tracked down what seemed to be a very powerful specimen. But SCP-343 didn't seem concerned. He reacted calmly when detained by the Foundation and went with them willingly. He was detained in a standard holding cell for interrogation and examination, but he seemed completely at ease with his sudden confinement. It would soon become clear that this ordinary old man was anything but. Doctors Beck and Nidlovu was brought in to consult on the SCP's classification, and that's when the first anomalies began. Their assessments matched initially, but when it came time to describe him physically, things took a strange turn. Older male, seemingly nondescript and with no unusual physical features. Caucasian in appearance. Dr. Nidlovu was confused by what Dr. Beck was describing in his report. This man was clearly black. The two doctors quarreled, unable to square their differing perceptions. They decided to bring in a third impartial view to settle it, their fellow researcher Dr. Wan. She didn't take long before coming back with her assessment. Older male, seemingly nondescript and with no unusual physical features, Asian in appearance, possibly Chinese. Whatever SCP-343 was, he seemed to be perceived by each staff member as close in appearance to their own race. But that was only the start of the anomalies surrounding the old man in the holding cell. Dr. Beck started making regular visits to the mysterious man, and in their first interview, he asked the old man who he was and how he came by his abilities. The old man had a simple response. I created the universe. Dr. Beck stifled a laugh and decided to indulge the old man's delusion. It was a fascinating claim, but could he prove it? Without another word, SCP-343 got up from his chair, laughed, and turned around and walked through the solid wall in the holding cell and disappeared. Dr. Beck was about to hit the panic button and marshal the facility's security to find him when the strange man reappeared, walking through the solid wall. The only thing that was different? He was holding a hamburger, which he sat down and enjoyed. The facility quickly went on lockdown, and a full investigation was done into how SCP-343 breached containment. But there was no evidence of any security breach, no failures in containment, and no evidence of any other cells failing. SCP-343 hadn't broken through the security, he had just ignored it, as if it wasn't there at all. When questioned about how he had gone on his hamburger run, he simply repeated his belief that he was God, in between bites of his fast food treat. This would be far from the only time strange things happened around SCP-343. SCP containment cells are as secure as they need to be, but even the least strict containment isn't known for its decor. Which is why Dr. Beck was in for a surprise the next time he paid visit to SCP-343. The bare-bones cell now looked like a comfortable home, decorated in old English fashions. The scientists assumed that SCP-343 had been making many more trips out of his cell to get accessories to feel more at home. 
But that didn't explain all the changes to the cell. No one could explain how he had installed a roaring fireplace in the containment cell, and everyone who entered could swear the cell looked many times bigger than any other cell in the facility. SCP-343 wasn't just breaking containment. He now seemed to be breaking the laws of physics in the facility. The rules of the SCP containment facility didn't seem to be a concern to SCP-343, but there was one thing he didn't seem to want to do, escape. After every sudden exit, he would always return to his personal cell and treat it as his home. When interviewed by staff members, he was polite but vague, and everyone seemed to enjoy talking to him. It was decided to keep him on site, not attempt to increase his security, but restrict access and keep his room guarded at all times to ensure only researchers with level 3 access and above were allowed to meet with him. But God works in mysterious ways. Minimal Security Site 17 was one of the least restrictive SCP containment sites, hosting anomalies that could be safely contained and weren't likely to mount violent escapes. But as in every SCP facility, security was still taken seriously and only those with proper clearance could interact with the subjects. So why did SCP-343 seem impossible to guard? While only level 3 clearance and above were allowed in, the guards assigned to protect the entrance all seemed to fall down on the job. Security Officer James, who was supposed to be keeping people out of SCP-343's cell, had instead let in multiple visitors, in addition to dropping in several times himself. When questioned on why he had gone against orders and done so, he simply replied that 343 seemed lonely and was so happy every time he got company that it just seemed like the right thing to do. The security guard was reassigned and new ones were brought in, but history repeated itself. Guards were given stricter instructions to minimize exposure, but SCP-343's presence always seemed to influence them anyway. His containment cell was a revolving door, with staff members at the facility entering regularly for friendly conversations. Dr. Beck decided it was time to take matters into his own hands. He would meet with SCP-343 one-on-one -on -one and express how dangerous these security breaches were. He would try to convince the mysterious being that he needed to stop influencing the minds of the guards watching him, or the facility would have to look into new measures to contain him. Dr. Beck entered the containment cell and had a long conversation with SCP-343, and when he emerged, he had a big smile on his face like he had just finished a reunion with an old friend. He gave the current guard a friendly clap on the back and told him not to worry so much about security. After all, nothing bad was going to happen from letting people at the facility visit SCP-343, right? He wasn't dangerous in any way. He also said that security should bring him anything he requests so he would feel less need to leave his cell. Minimal Security Site-17 soon became a model SCP facility with morale being the highest of any site, with most giving the credit to the presence of SCP-343. Employees generally make daily visits to his chamber, and he seems to have an encyclopedic knowledge of anything they want to talk about, including things he should have no way of knowing. Guards no longer quit their posts or break protocol, as their only real duty is to keep track of who meets with SCP-343 so they can be interviewed and debriefed after. Everyone's conversation is different, but they all report being in a better mood after leaving than when they came in. No further information is available on SCP-343's origins, the full extent of his powers, or whether he is telling the truth about being the god who created the universe. The site director rubbed his temples after hearing the researcher's explanation. So what you're telling me is that we have an uncontained, highly powerful SCP that has not only been breaking containment whenever it wants, but has managed to destroy all the files regarding the research on it. The researcher's answer was yes. However, the situation at Site-17 seemed to be stable, and they had come up with a plan that should help to maximize the positive effect SCP-343 has on the facility. They were even hypothesizing that staff from other sites and even certain anomalies could be pacified by 343's presence. The site director wasn't impressed though. He wanted the researcher to go back to the drawing board and redo the research. After all, if all the files were blank, how could they ever learn how to properly contain it? That's what the C and SCP stood for after all. Containment. The researcher finally had to stand to the director though and told them that it wasn't a good idea that they had already tried everything to contain SCP-343, but that it wasn't that he broke containment. It was as if he didn't even acknowledge that an attempt had been made to contain him. He was omnipotent, aware of things he shouldn't, 
and able to do things that broke the laws of physics without breaking a sweat. There was no evidence that this was God, the creator of the universe as he claimed to be, but there also wasn't any evidence yet to conclusively prove he wasn't. The researcher's best guess was that this was a powerful reality bender whose abilities knew no limits, and that the only reason he was staying in the facility was because he wanted to, and doing anything to change that might cause him to change his benevolent ways. The director sighed. As much as he hated to admit it, his researcher was making good points. He wanted to meet SCP-343 personally, but did he need to know anything first? Well, sir, the researcher replied, he likes hamburgers, but beyond that, he'll take care of the rest. He's right there where we left him, in his home, waiting for his next guest. Now, for a less friendly old guy in SCP custody, check out SCP-106, The Old Man Escape. And for another ancient and uncontainable being, watch SCP-3000, Anatashisha.